Have you ever wondered what would happen if you tried to pull off Captain America's most jaw-dropping stunts with just a normal human body? I'm talking about stopping a helicopter mid-flight, chucking a shield like it's a boomerang, and running as if you stole Usain Bolt's speed. Sounds awesome, right? Well, the real question is, could you survive it? Or would you end up on a very painful trip to the hospital? Today, we're unraveling the science behind Captain America's wildest feats, exploring the differences between Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson, and asking if real-life technology could ever make a true super soldier. Stick around, because by the end, you might think twice before you try to reenact any Marvel action scenes in your backyard. First, let's jump back to 1941, a time when the world was at war and the comic book scene was bursting with creativity. Enter Steve Rogers, a skinny, sickly kid with more patriotism than muscle mass. So scrawny that the army basically laughed at him during the physical exam. But Steve's got heart, and when you have heart in a comic book universe, things tend to go your way. He volunteers for Project Rebirth, a secret program led by Dr. Abraham Erskine, who's cooking up the legendary Super Soldier Serum. Combine that serum with some Vita Rays, don't ask, it's comic book science, and boom, Steve transforms from a 90-pound weakling into a nearly unstoppable superhuman. Blessed with heightened strength, speed, agility, endurance, basically everything except the ability to do laundry with his mind. In the Marvel Cinematic Universe, Chris Evans brings this transformation to life we see Steve outrunning cars, leaping out of planes without a parachute, and even stopping a helicopter from taking off with nothing but his biceps, grit, and a prayer. It all looks easy when you're wearing red, white, and blue spandex, but realistically, it's a surefire recipe for snapped bones and immediate regret if you or I ever tried it. Then there's Sam Wilson, also known as the Falcon, who eventually becomes Captain America 2.0. Unlike Steve, Sam isn't hopped up on magic juice. He's just a highly trained soldier who knows how to pilot winged jetpacks better than most people can ride a bicycle. In the comics, he's got a psychic link with birds, yes, birds, and can coordinate with his loyal falcon, Red Wing. The MCU toned that down, focusing on Sam's top-tier military experience, strategic mind, and an unwavering moral compass. He proves that you don't need a serum pumping through your veins to carry that iconic shield with honor, or to deliver a swift beatdown to a room full of Hydra agents. When you compare the two, Steve Rogers is the byproduct of cutting edge, if fictional science, while Sam Wilson represents the pinnacle of disciplined, flesh and blood human effort. Both are heroic, both are fearless, and both stand for something greater than themselves. But while Steve can bench press ridiculous amounts and run marathons at the speed of a sprint, Sam shows that willpower, training, and ingenuity can go a long way, even when you don't have a super serum advantage. Still, the big question lingers. Could a normal, unaltered person, the way we are right now, survive doing even half the stuff that Captain America is known for? Let's find out. Let's imagine you wake up one morning convinced that you are, in fact, Captain America. Maybe you put on a fancy costume, grab a circular metal object you found in the garage, and proclaim, I can do this all day. But can you really? First, picture that famous moment in Captain America, Civil War, where Steve literally holds down a helicopter that's revving its engines to take off. A light helicopter weighs around 3,000 pounds, that's more than two grand pianos stacked on top of each other. Human bones, though pretty resilient, can handle only so much strain before they crack like dry twigs. Studies show that our skeletons can endure about 170 megapascals of compressive strength. Impressive, but nowhere near the stress you'd experience yanking on a helicopter skid. Unless you're rocking some top secret bone density that's triple the norm, you'll hear a snap before the pilot even revs the engine to full power. Then there's the classic shield toss. Imagine a disc traveling at roughly 80 kilometers per hour, slicing through the air and bouncing off walls like some kind of murderous frisbee. If you try to catch that bad boy barehanded, you'll be lucky if it only dislocates your shoulder. The force involved would shred your ligaments and break a few fingers along the way. 
And let's not forget the running. Usain Bolt holds the record for the 100-meter dash, clocking a top speed around 44 or 45 kilometers per hour, but only for a few seconds. Captain America seems to run that fast for extended periods, then jumps immediately into hand-to-hand -hand combat as if it's a light warm-up. In reality, sustaining that kind of speed for even half a minute would leave a top athlete gasping for air and possibly vomiting on the track. You'd need an off-the-charts VO2 max, bigger mitochondria in your muscle cells, and a heart that pumps blood faster than a fire hydrant on a hot summer day. Of course, the superhero landing is another staple that would spell doom for your spine. Drop from a decent height, hit the ground in a cool squat, and walk away looking impressive. In real life, that impact can be multiple times your body weight, enough to smash your ankles or cause a nasty fracture in your knees or lower back. Doctors everywhere collectively cringe whenever they see action heroes jump off buildings and land in a neat pose. In short, unless you happen to have a hidden serum supply in your fridge, your body just isn't made for these stunts. Even top-tier athletes who push the boundaries of human performance would be flirting with catastrophic injury. But while our biology has limits, technology might offer a helping hand. That leads us to the next big piece of the puzzle, the shield itself. Let's talk about the science behind the Vibranium Wonder Disc and see if real-world materials can give us anything close. Ah, the iconic shield. Shiny, red, white, and blue, and apparently capable of defying the laws of physics whenever the script calls for it. In the comics and films, it's crafted from vibranium, a fictional metal that can absorb and store enormous amounts of kinetic energy. Captain America can slam it into the ground after a 30-story drop, and it won't even show a dent. Thor's hammer can crack against it, and the shield basically shrugs it off. Unfortunately for us mere mortals, vibranium doesn't exist in real life, at least not that we know of. That said, we do have incredible materials on Earth. Titanium alloys are famously strong and light. High-grade steel can withstand thousands of megapascals of pressure. Carbon fiber is used in everything from Formula One cars to aerospace engineering. We even have advanced ceramics capable of resisting insane amounts of heat and impact, which NASA uses to protect spacecraft during re-entry. The trouble is that none of these materials flawlessly combine the traits that vibranium supposedly has. Super lightness, near indestructibility, and the ability to soak up massive collisions without transferring the shock to the wielder. Real ballistic shields used by special forces can stop bullets, but they're heavy and typically not something you'd want to fling across a battlefield. If you tried to replicate Cap's throwing style with a typical ballistic shield, you'd probably dislocate your shoulder before it sailed even half the distance it does in the movies. And good luck catching that chunk of metal on the rebound. So, while technology and material science continue to advance, a real Captain America shield, complete with ricochets, rebounds, and unstoppable momentum, remains firmly in the realm of fiction. But is anyone out there trying to turn soldiers into unstoppable machines anyway, with or without a magic metal disc? Funny you should ask. Believe it or not, history is full of attempts, some comically misguided, others downright terrifying, to create enhanced soldiers. During World War II, the United States, Germany, and Japan dabbled in using amphetamines to keep pilots and infantry awake for days. The idea was to get an edge in stamina and aggression, ignoring the catastrophic side effects on mental health and decision-making. A soldier who hasn't slept in 72 hours might fight hard, but clarity of thought goes right out the window, which is not exactly the ideal scenario. Then you jump forward to the Cold War, and things get even stranger. Research on steroids, mind-altering substances, and borderline unethical experiments like the CIA's MKULTRA program blurred the lines between legitimate scientific inquiry and science fiction. The dream of a perfect soldier, someone who can lift tanks, never feel pain, and follow orders without question, remained tantalizing but always just out of reach. Today, we're seeing a new wave of possibilities. 
Gene editing technology like CRISPR offers a way to tweak human DNA, potentially enhancing muscle growth, oxygen utilization, or even bone density. Meanwhile, engineers are building exoskeleton suits that let soldiers carry heavier gear with less strain. Some prototypes claim to double or triple a soldier's carrying capacity without exhausting them. It's not a serum that magically rewrites your biology, but it's the closest we've come in the real world. Instead of injecting superpowers, we're strapping them on. But all these advancements come with immense ethical dilemmas. If you edit a soldier's genes, are you altering their fundamental humanity? If you create an exoskeleton that makes an individual more lethal, what does that do to the nature of warfare? And if you push the limits too far, are we turning human beings into disposable machines? Captain America's story, at its heart, was always about morality as much as might. Steve Rogers was chosen for his courage and integrity, not just his potential for muscle growth. Real-world projects often focus on raw power first and moral questions second, which is a recipe for some very tense conversations in scientific and military circles. So while the world marches on with exoskeletons, performance-enhancing drugs, and gene-editing experiments, we're still nowhere near a scenario where someone can replicate Captain America's stunts without shattering bones or requiring immediate medical evacuation. And that brings us right back to the question, could an ordinary person here and now possibly handle any of Cap's mind-blowing feats? The short answer is a resounding no. Without super serum, advanced gear, and a personal cameo from comic book physics, you'd wind up with torn muscles, broken bones, and maybe a viral YouTube clip of your epic failure. Captain America's feats are extraordinary for a reason. He's a fictional icon, the product of creative minds who wanted to imagine a hero that represented the best of humanity, plus the superhuman stuff. Trying to mimic his stunts with normal bones and ligaments is like putting a hamster on a racetrack with Formula One cars. It's never going to end well. That said, the story of Captain America is less about raw power and more about spirit, courage, and decency. Whether it's Steve Rogers pushing himself beyond any limit, or Sam Wilson proving that normal humans can stand shoulder to shoulder with gods and cyborgs, the real superpower here is moral fortitude. Sure, it's fun to geek out about vibranium and unstoppable helicopters, but there's something equally inspiring in Sam's decision to carry on Cap's legacy without any serum in his veins. It reminds us that heroism isn't just about bench pressing a tank, it's about standing firm for what you believe in. Now, before you leap off your couch and attempt a superhero landing in the driveway, do me a favor, hit that like button. If you enjoyed this breakdown of the science and history behind Captain America, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss our next deep dive into the wild worlds of comics, movies, and futuristic tech. And drop a comment telling me which Captain America moment made your jaw drop the most. Was it the time he fought off a dozen heavily armed agents in an elevator? Or that scene where he outran cars on foot and still had time to trade witty banter? Who knows, maybe one day science will catch up and we'll see an actual super soldier strolling around. But until that day, let's leave the helicopter stopping, shield throwing shenanigans to the professionals in Hollywood. After all, real life doesn't come with a retake button or CGI to patch up our broken bones. So stay safe, stay curious, and never stop dreaming about what we could achieve with just a little extra spark of heroism. Or, you know, a top secret serum. Whichever comes first.